So here we go for our first um, actual definition. Um, let me quickly grab the an image that's going to describe to you what it is we're doing. Or do I already have it up? I do. Okay. So this is what we're going to create. Um, and we're going to play around with it a few different ways. So don't try to memorize it and build it right now. Okay. Um, we're going to create a grid. And then we're going to map circles onto that grid. And then we're going to modify said circles in a bunch of different ways. Okay. Um, bear in mind that as we do this, these yellow panels are going to be very, very important because more than just creating the grid, I need you to understand how it works. Okay, so you're going to look at this and by the time we're done, we're going to say, oh no, I spent an hour on creating 16 circles. I could have just done that in two minutes on Rhino. But that's not really the point that I'm trying to make here. Yes, you could build that faster in Rhino, but you can't build um, you know, all the panels on the Disney concert hall on Rhino faster than you could with Grasshopper, Dang. right? So um, <laughs> it's very, very important to understand how the information works. So let's get to it. Um, so first and foremost, uh, what we're creating this on is a grid. Okay, and grids are basically just a geometrical construct with points and lines and you know cells and stuff like that. Um, but they are found under the vector tab and under the um, grid panel. Okay, so let me quickly just take a, a, a side step here and and describe to you what I just said. Okay, I said the vector tab and the grid panel. Okay, so Tabs are the little things up top, the general categories. The panels are these, you know, black subcategories. Okay, so I need you to just, you know, get that as like second nature in your mind at some point. Okay, so uh, with this, we have a couple of different ways of creating grids. Okay, and this time, um, I'm I could just use a rectangular or a square grid. That's what we're going to use. I don't want to confuse you with much else. So um, for um, brevity's sake, let's. Just grab the rectangular one. <clears throat> okay, so this says um, it's a 2D grid with rectangular cells. Okay, those cells are created off of uh, a set of data inputs, which you see here and now you're familiar with, right? This one has five data inputs. And another sidestep, I'm doing this excruciatingly slow for now. Eventually, I'll get faster, and we won't have to go over every input of every component that we put in. Okay, what's that? How do you delete a component? Click it and hit delete. Well, oh yeah, uh, shoot. I don't know how to do it on Mac. <laughs> What'd you do? Function delete. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Interesting question. All right. Um, Okay, so all the more reason to get here early so that you don't have to work on a Mac, right? All right, so here we go, guys. I, I need to get you to focus again because this is very, very important. So the P input, when you need to find out more about a particular component, you just need to hover over the information it's asking for, okay? So your mouse, when you hover over the name of it, is going to tell you something different than when you hover over the P input. So now you can see the P input says plane, base plane for grid, and it says one locally defined value, world X, Y. Okay, so that is telling you something. So it's asking for the base plane for the grid. It currently has one locally defined value, which is the world X, Y. Okay, so that's a default value, which a number of these components will have. And you'll get used to expecting certain default values um, frequently, like the point values came in at zero. Those can be overridden with your input. So um, let me zoom out here in the perspective. Uh, let's go to top view, actually. Zoom out. And I don't know about you, but I hate the grid, so I'm going to hide that. 
All right. So um, here's what it's creating. Okay, it looks a little funky, right? Because we're creating a grid, but it shows me two of them, right? One of those grids is the grid that it's creating. The other grid is the world XY grid. Okay, so naturally, I'm sure you probably could figure out at this point that the one in, that's sort of in the bottom left, that's the world XY because the center of it lives at the origin. Um, the rectangular grid that's being created is the one that's growing from the origin. And um, the reason I know that here is because as I hover over my X, my Y, or, well, my S, X, S, Y, and then E, X, E, Y, it says positive 1, right? And then S, Y is positive 2. E, X is 10, and E, Y is 5, okay? So the positivity of those numbers is important. You guys remember your Cartesian coordinate system, yeah. right? Anybody need a refresher? Yeah. No shame, but okay. So uh, I should probably just pull it up here for your sake. Okay. Here we go. That's really small. Well, you guys could probably see it. Can you see it? Hang on. Let me find a higher res. Let me find a higher res one that I can. There we go. Here we go. Okay. So the Cartesian coordinate system. Um, this is pr if if it's something that you haven't thought about in like the last you know six years since like sophomore year in high school, um, which for most of us it is. Um, this could trip you up quite significantly. Okay, so positive, positive goes right and up, right? You, you remember how like when you set up the, because everything's gonna happen, like all the information you're seeing is gonna happen in the X, Y, and then Z structure. Okay, so it's gonna go right first, then it's gonna go up, and then it's gonna go back in the Z direction, right? So positive this way, negative that way, so on and so forth. So positive, positive is quadrant one, uh, negative positive is quadrant two, negative negative is three, and then um, positive negative is quadrant four, right? So you guys, with that quick refresher, can follow that at this stage, right? Okay, so um, that became evident to me here because when I look at the description of what this is, size X and size Y are uh, positive values, right? So it's going to basically create a cell the first cell is going to go one value to the right, and then it's going to go two values up. And because there are overlapping grids, uh, it's a little different, but um, you, you kind of see it already subdivided. But here's your one by two cell. Okay, and then it, it just has a value. It has 10 of them going one direction and five of them going the other. You guys understand the structure of that so far? Okay, here's how we change it. Um, <coughs> The point can be any point that we designate, okay? Um, normally, I just kind of leave everything at the origin, but I think um, you guys can handle this, right? Um, the point is anything that we reference. So if we want to reference it from Rhino into Grasshopper, what do you think we use? Remember I mentioned an empty housing? for passing information? Params, yes, thank you. So um, basically, if I have a point anywhere in space in Rhino, right, I can go to the param menu, and I can select the point param, drop that in, and right now it's orange, okay, so I haven't described this yet, but orange means that it has, it doesn't have information, or it's not processing the information. Um, and this little tag up here will describe what's going wrong. And right now, the, the terminology they use is going to kind of be above your head for a while, but you'll begin to figure out what's happening. Where It says floating parameter point failed to collect data. Okay, so um, what you need to do is assign it a point by right-clicking and say um, set one point. It's this right here. And when... It'll minimize like this, 
And you just need to go into the Rhino interface then and just click on the point that you want to reference. That geometry then has a red X on it. And when you click it here, it turns green. Okay, so notice how the point is green, the grid is red. If I click on the grid, it becomes green, the point is red, right? So when you select something in Grasshopper, it shows you what you've selected in green in Rhino. Okay? So um, when I uh, want to actually input this information to move my grid to that location, I have to connect it with what's called a wire. Okay? Wires are created simply by dragging from the output of a node or component um, to the corresponding input. And when it's ready to receive it, it'll show like a solid line before it's ready to receive it, or if you're not exactly on the point that it's connecting to, it'll show a dashed line like this. So you just connect it like that, and it'll move that over. What's that? We're just moving the origin of the grid. You're getting too advanced already, man. Let's stay in the XY for now. Or are you saying it already did? Oh, we'll get there. We're going to stay 2D for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me see how we're doing on time. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to stop this video where it is, and then we're going to actually modify that grid later uh, in just a second.